Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. It's a very exciting day here in Twins ter territory. We're set to introduce Rocco Baldelli, our 14th manager in Twins history. So welcome, Rocco. I also want to take a moment to recognize Sid Hartman, who's here after 73 years of writing for the Star Tribune. He was inducted into the Minnesota Sports Hall of Fame last night. So Sid, from all of us, congratulations. A few housekeeping notes. Uh, we do have wireless mics on the side. We'll open up with, with Derek Falvey's comments, followed by Rocco Baldelli, and then we'll open up for questions. So with that, I'd like to hand it off to Derek Falvey. All right, I'll be, uh, I'll be brief here. First, uh, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, first and foremost, I want to recognize Rocco's family here. Uh, his father, Dan, his mother, Michelle, his girlfriend, Allie, uh, and his brothers, Nick, Dante and Min, uh, who are here today to celebrate a, a momentous occasion for here for Rocco and uh, an opportunity that is very special, not just for him, but for his family as well. I think when we set out uh, to find the partner uh, and manager that we were looking for, uh, we talked a lot about finding a partner who, had, uh, who shared a vision, uh, who, who looked at things uh, ultimately in a way that uh, would push us forward and continue to grow us, but also embodied everything that was about the Twins tradition, everything about this organization, uh, the character, uh, the integrity, the values of this organi organization, and everything that that represents. And I will tell you that when we set, this, when we set out on this, that was our hope. That was our desire. I don't think I could have envisioned a scenario where we could have found a better partner than Rocco Baldelli to be the next manager of the Minnesota Twins. He's a special person. You, everyone in this room will get to know that over time. He's someone who is focused on growth, development, um, open-mindedness and communication. He's somebody who we believe will be a big, a big member of helping us build sustainable championship caliber baseball here in the Twin City. So with that, I'm, I'm excited to introduce uh, our new partner, the manager, the new manager of the Minnesota Twins, Rocco Baldelli. Hi, everyone. Um, to say I'm happy to be here, I think would be a huge understatement. Um, so I, I, I embarked in, on this journey uh, this, this off season. I mean, a lot of things happened very quickly. Um, where I've landed, I. I'm absolutely ecstatic. And um, getting to know the Polad family, getting to know the guys I'm sitting with up here. I had a little history with this guy. My brother played with Derek uh, at Trinity College. Um, but really getting to know him right now, getting to know the rest of the group and the front office and, and the people that work here, kind of getting out into the community, it's, it's, it's what warmed me um, to the Twin Cities, it, 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 it's, it, this is an emotional time for me as well um, because it means a lot to me. And, and I take this job very, very seriously and I wanna work with amazing people and I think I've found a great group and a great partnership to, to show up to, to the field with every day. And it, I'd, I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank everyone, <laughs> um, the poll ads, Derek, Thad, uh, Dustin, uh, there are a number of others, Dave St. Peter. Um, these, all of these people have made me feel as comfortable and, um, and as accepted as, as possible. I couldn't feel any better about where I'm sitting. So thank you all very, very, very much. Um, and obviously, the people who I love are sitting right here in the front row. And they all came out here. They've supported me since I was a young person, since I was you know, playing in our yard before Little League even started. And, and to be sitting up here is uh, it's an amazing thing. So I love you guys, and thank you. All right, at this point, we will open it up for questions. Uh, if you guys could all wait for the wireless mic, just state your name and affiliation so Rocco can get to know you. That'd be great. We'll start with Jim Suhan here in the first. To start with uh, Derek and Thad, can you talk about whether it was more his resume and experience or more the interview process and getting to know him that, that swayed you to, to hire him? So, I, I mean, I think part, part of what got him on the board was his resume, but I think what got him through the process was the person. So I, I think we did a ton of vetting of every single candidate. Everybody we talked to about Rocco just was glowing about his ability to develop relationships, to respect people to both lead and follow, which I think we learned to be 
he, he's willing to talk and to listen. And I think that combination was extremely endearing to us. When we got to spend time with him, I think the things that stood out to me were, were his humility. He was one of the candidates who was most comfortable telling us what he didn't know and how he was going to go about trying to ferret out information by talking to, to people who were very knowledgeable. And his wealth of relationships was exceptional. So the people he could draw on to solve problems, I think, was really what caught our attention. And so I think what was on a piece of paper got him on the board. What was in the man in the heart was what got him in the chair today. Okay. Manage here. So I have a, I have an incredible relationship, not just a uh, a work relationship, baseball relationship, but a very personal relationship with the people down in Tampa Bay. I've been there my my entire adult life, essentially. Um, the people there have prepared me to do anything, and I feel like that. I actually believe that. Um, they've They've counseled me. I'm not talk, I'm talking about personal things on top of baseball things. They prepared me in every way to feel confident in myself, to go out into the world, whether it's baseball or not, and, and do whatever it is that I want to do. So that's not a specific baseball answer for you, but I think what Tampa Bay did for me was bigger than just showing up to the field. It was, uh, it was very personal, and I have a lot to be thankful for for the, for the time that I've spent there. Joe? Uh, Joe Schmidt, 5 Eyewitness News. Um, Rocco, what is your philosophy going to be uh, leading this team, and, and not only uh, leading this team, but baseball and analytics? So how much time do we have? Uh, there's, there's a lot that goes into that. I, I honestly, I have different thoughts on different parts of that question. I think um, in general, I like to create a really good environment. I'm a little serious right now. This is a, you know, there's a lot going on, but I like to have fun. Like I, I like for the players to, to love showing up to that environment, to that clubhouse. Um, I like them to be relaxed and confident and, and be able to go out there and have some individuality, individuality and, and have fun. And I feel like when guys are relaxed and are having fun out in the field, um, they play their best also. So I think that part of it is one thing I believe in. Um, I believe in just demanding that guys compete out in the field and, and try to do better than they did the day before or to learn one thing in a given day. Um, I believe in just simple concepts like that. And, and truthfully, I don't think it's a lot to ask, but at the end of the day, they will become better players and hopefully better people uh, by spending the season here in, Minis in Minnesota. And, and I believe that. The analytics part of the question, I came up in Tampa Bay. I, I worked in our front office. I did, a, I did a lot of scouting, and now I've coached with Tampa Bay. And what I learned is analytics, that's just a word. Really all we're trying to do is put our players in position to succeed. And if we can have some better helpful information that can either help me or help the staff or help the players, um, that's what we're looking for. I think it's a huge, uh, it's, it's an asset to, to, to have those um, to have that information and have really the ability to use it, which is actually even more important than just getting a bunch of, uh, you know, info. The info doesn't do anything in and of itself. It's the people that are able to take that info and to really break it down and, and sometimes give it to players. Sometimes the players, you know, you're just putting them in a certain spot. And sometimes you give it to the players and you're showing them something. But it's just finding the best way to use it um, so they're comfortable with it too. Brennan. Uh, Brandon Warren's own coverage. Uh, Rocco, from our point of view, you were very clearly in demand this offseason for interviews. So why was Minnesota the right fit for you of all the places that you may have, have talked to? First and foremost, it was the feel that I got just from the, the conversations that I had when I came up here. It's, it's the people involved. It's, it was, I got the opportunity to meet the Polad family, Jim and Joe. Um, I got to spend a lot of time with the guys on the stage with me right now. But I also heard just as many, just as much as I sat there and did answer some questions and respond to questions, I also heard a lot about what the organization and the community stand for up here. And, and it gave me just a tremendous feeling when I left. And at, I'd say that's the main reason why I was so excited about it. Lavelle? On your right. Rocco Lavelle, Neil, Minneapolis Star Tribune. Hello, nice to meet you. you um, 
it's not the using your, years in your life, it's the life in your years, but at age 29, when you decide to end your playing career and go into another direction, what was that journey like and did you know at the time you wanted to be a manager? So right off the bat, at that time, no, I, I didn't uh, think really about being a manager. At that point, I was worried about what I was going to do the next day. Uh, anytime you're kind of in flux or anytime you're, you're at a point in your life, I think, where there's change, it's a little scary for anyone, you know, the, the unknown. Um, at that point in my life, I contemplated a lot, doing a lot of different things. But Andrew Friedman, who was the general manager with the Rays, offered me a place, and, and Stu Sternberg, the owner, offered me a place in the organization um, when I was done playing. And, and I thought about it and said, this is what I know. I love going to the field. I love the people I've been with. I'm going to just go for it. And uh, at that point, I didn't have any real personal ambition. It was more, I want to work with these people, and I want to win, and I want to have a great experience doing it. And, and that's really the way I approach everything. Even, even to this day, that's the way that I approach everything. It's not about, really in my mind, I don't think very much about you know, myself and, and, and personal benefit as much as I actually do want to show up with people that I like to work with and that, that challenge me every day and that I can go out there and, and go enjoy, you know, this experience with. That, that's, that means more to me than anything. Dude, Joe. Hey, Rocco. Joe Christensen, Star Tribune. Hey, Joe. Your second year in the big leagues uh, sounded like you had a slow start. Pinella called you in for a, a meeting, and it, from what I've read, it was a real turning point. What, what did he say? What did it mean to you? And what, how might that shape, you know, you, when you're a manager? So, of all the managers I've been around, Lou was very particular. He he had his specific way of of interacting and doing things. That was one of the. That moment taught me a lot. That actually did happen. Um, I had a, uh, my first year, I had some success. I came into my second year and didn't initially. And it was very difficult. And you start thinking a lot of different things. And those thoughts affect what you do on the field. They, they tangibly, tangibly affect your performance. And, and the mind is, is incredibly fragile at times and incredibly you know, durable and strong at times. And that was a time where I needed what Lou gave me. And he called me in the office and he said, listen, he probably said like, son, and then said something else, and then <laughs> said, uh, he said, you're our guy, I don't know what you're doing out there, just relax and go play, you're going to be out there every day, go. And th it, was, it was basically it, that was essentially the message. And just hearing that allowed me to sleep at night and know that I was going to have the opportunity and that even if I went over for the next day, I didn't have to worry about anything. All I had to worry about was just doing uh, better making adjustments, making improvements, and and it, and it did everything for me. John. Hi, I'm John Shipley. I'm with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Hi, John. Um, Derek, I wanted to ask you when you introduced Rocco, you used the word partner three times and manager once. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a new kind of approach, or do, do you feel like it is? Well, uh, you know, that wasn't by design, I, I would say. But I would say this, that, uh, you know, when we talk about, uh, we've talked all along about the importance of connecting all aspects of our operation, you know, from, from the Dominican Republic all the way uh, from our academy down there all the way through the minor leagues and what we're doing here at the major league level. And we feel that way in the front office. We feel that way across our performance areas. And ultimately, we feel that way between, you know, with the relationship we have here. I, I think that alignment is so critical to long-term success in, in baseball. And when you look around the game uh, and you see different, um, you know, different situations that, that are right now either still playing or, or continuing to, uh, to show that there's growth and development over time, it's critical that we all have a partnership here around how we want to operate. And I want Rocco's input as much on uh, what we're doing in the Dominican and how we're developing young players as, as much as I hope he's asking me questions about what can we do to help around the major league environment. We're, we're a leadership team, and that goes from ownership all the way down through every baseball operation employee we have. I, I take a look at the, the partnership from a little bit of a similar perspective, which is we wanted somebody who cared enough to invest in our development and challenged us enough and capable enough to push us to heights that we don't even know we can achieve right now. And I think that's why we looked at this not just as a manager, but as somebody 
who was like more of a full service partner to us. Uh, Jim Suhan, Star Tribune. I was curious, have you begun thinking about how you can help some of the Twins talented young players who have struggled? Obviously Buxton, Snow, maybe even Kepler. So as I sit here right now, I want to learn as much as I can about these guys and talk to people who've spent a lot of time around all of them um, and also meet them and actually talk to them before I, I feel like I have any ability to help anyone. I, I don't have, as I sit here right now, I don't have uh, any answers. I can only say that it's, it's a, it, it is a process and I, I, I'm very much looking forward to connecting with these guys and talking with them because just as much as I would be able to share with them, I want to hear what they have to say and I think that's probably the best place for me to start when, when talking with the players. Dan? Uh, Dan Hayes from The Athletic. Um, what's the timeline right now for your, your coaching staff? And, and have you guys already begun discussions amongst yourselves uh, as far as putting that together? Uh, I don't have it. As I sit here right now, this is one of the most important, if not the most important, initial topics for, I think, all of us to spend time on. Um, I believe, as I said earlier, the construction of a staff is is essential to a Major League Baseball team having success and creating environment and getting where we want to be. And, and again, this is my first day. Uh, I'm sure this is something that is going to take a lot of time and energy. And I, I, that's where I, this is where I want to put my energy right now into exactly your question. Patrick. Rocco, uh, Pat Ricey, uh, does uh, the uh, disease that cost you your career manifest itself in any way now, or is that, uh, are you good there? So I take care of myself probably a lot better than I used to uh, when I was 25. Um, I, feel, I feel really good. I, uh, I sleep. I get, I get, I, and honestly, these things matter. I get as much sleep as I can. I work out. Like, I, I feel great. Um, but I also know that I, that I have to take uh, care of myself as well in ways that when I was a young guy, I was not really thinking of. Um, I've gotten to go through four scouting seasons and four years of coaching, and I feel, I feel more than comfortable that my, uh, my body and my mind will, will hold up great. Um, but I also know that, yes, I, I do take care of myself, and I also don't have to run around on the field anymore, which is probably the most important thing um, you know, for me feeling well, but, but I do feel great. Thank you. One more question. How's your Spanish? <laughs> Honestly, very, very important question. And it's, it's my Spanish is minimal. And, but I think that's a good, I think your question leads to, to something else. Um, and kind of ties back into the, our staff question that we just had, which is when you have a staff that can relate to different players in different ways, I think you have a much better chance of touching these guys and helping them in their careers and getting them where they need to be. If every person, as you kind of are alluding to, if everyone spoke English and everyone you know, uh, came from the same place and you know, everyone was very similar personality-wise with the same background, I think that staff is going to struggle. I, and I believe that. And I, I think that, that diversity on the staff in a lot of different ways matters to me a lot. Right here. Rocco Armando Quintero with La Raza Radio and Telemundo, Minnesota. Hey, Bienvenido a um, uh, Minnesota. Thank you. Follow-up question. <laughs> is, 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 that, is that the extent of the Spanish? Is that it? You guys played that well, maybe. <laughs> See, follow-up question. Yeah. You're good. I was going to ask you about uh, your thoughts on being able to communicate with and get the most out of all of the Latino players in the Twins organization? So I think it works um, in a way where when you show an interest in people, I'm not talking about just Latin players right now, but when you uh, spend time with people and, and you create a relationship, I have, as, I have great relationships with many different people from many that came from many different places people i played with coached with um when you take the time and invest time and in just in just people in general generally you get a you get a good response when you um are kind and you know are there for people when they need you and you create trust and respect um that's when people respond and i truly believe it doesn't matter where you're from i think certainly i think having 
staff members, if, if I'm not going to be able to communicate as well as I possibly can with a player, um, it might not be verbally sometimes, but you might have a great relationship with someone. That being said, I do think that having staff members that relate very well to the Latino player, um, that's a very important thing, and, and especially in a sport like this where there are a lot of Latino players. Quick follow-up question. Um, are you actively looking for a Latino coach to have in the dugout with you? I think that's a fair question. I think I'm looking for a very diverse staff. And so I can't speak directly. Yes, I think in general that would be a great place to start and a great, um, you know, to have wonderful Latino coaches. Is I, I've seen one of my best friends who was just named the manager of the Blue Jays, or I don't know, are we allowed yeah. to say that? Did that, ha I think did it's that happen? I think it's public. Is it public yet? Good. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Sorry, I didn't mean to mess, you know, <laughs> drop, drop a bomb up Strike and, that and from the, you know, the, 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 the job bomb. Um, <laughs> I've seen him. I've seen him relate to players in ways that I can't, and that I, although I would try very hard in some ways, I see him just step up and do things, um, and and I can't explain it all, and I and I can't tell you why it happens, but he has he is he comes from a completely different place than I do, a completely different background. His coaching career started and has gotten to this point. Um, from a completely different place, but he relates to some players extraordinarily well in ways that I could never even hope to. And I hope that there are some guys that also I, I relate to very well that maybe he can't connect with as well. But really, I think the goal here is when you have an entire group that, like I said, comes from different places, speak different languages, um, have different coaching backgrounds, when you have a group that does all of these different things, uh, then you're really giving yourself a chance to have success because if you don't have if you don't have that kind of group, I think you will struggle. You're Chris over here, Jill. Chris Long from Five Witness News. You said I want to have fun. I want players to have fun, enjoy the clubhouse, have individuality. Sounds like there might be some Joe Madden influence in there. How important is he to what you have learned about managing and what you will continue to learn? Well, Joe was definitely an influence on me, and, and also so was Tito, and, and so was Kevin. And, and truthfully, I've spent the, you know, the most time and the most intimate time with Kevin. Um, and those are, those are three different people. I mean, Kevin and Tito are like this, so maybe it's like two different people. But, uh, <laughs> but, right. but they actually are um, similar in some ways. And it, it, they... I've seen this approach work well when you support these players and give them some freedom. They actually respond uh, very well to it and they like it. And, you know, does that open up other avenues where maybe, you know, you, you might want to keep an eye on certain things when you give people extra freedom? Absolutely. But I, I, I actually think that when they come to the field, they show up to work. Uh, they take ownership of what they're doing better than when you're just regulating everything that they do. Um, and I prefer this approach to the other. Jim, back right. Rocco, Jim Rich with Fox 9 Sports here in Hi, Twin Jim. Cities. Um, you talk about the fact that you, know, you like these guys to have fun, but how do you work the respect angle? If this is your first job, everybody knows you're the youngest manager. How do you get these guys to believe in what you're telling them with uh, limited experience? I think you talk to them. You don't, you don't, come out the first day and give your hopefully semi-interesting spring training speech to the whole team and hope that that's going to do the trick. That's, that's not how it works. And, I, and well, the way it works is you hopefully talk to them this off season, and then you get to know them a little bit and then you get to know them a little more and then you show up to spring training and you take, a, you take an interest in them, not just in their baseball careers, but get to know them. I mean, I like, to get, I like, I like getting to know people and I appreciate the people that I work with, not just for the, for the players that they are and what they do out on the field. Um, I like to know what makes these guys tick and, and really how to get the most out of them on the field and, and off. Um, and so that's really the answer. I mean, when you have a good relationship with people and when, you know, I know people when they walk in the room and it makes me happy to see them and I'm actually looking forward to hearing what they're going to say, um, that's going to work out well. When, when stuff like that starts happening, it's going to work out well. And that's, that's really, at the end of the day, what I'm looking to hopefully create. And, but it doesn't take, um, it takes time. It, it does not just happen overnight. Someone who I don't know or have never met, why would they have an exceptional amount of trust in me, except for Derek and Thad 
hiring me, I guess. Um, besides that, you know, they don't, they don't know me. You, you build that over time, and it, that's the part that I look forward to, the interactions that I have and, and in building that tru the, the trust and the relationships with these guys. And you don't know how it's going to end up, but that's the only way I know how to do it. On your left, Joe. Derek, uh, knowing Rocco's story of his career like you do, sure. how do you think specifically like the early success the medical stuff he went through and then kind of, you know, how he finished with Flourish. How, how do you think that will help him re relate to players? Well, I, th I think what Rocco has established is an ability to respond to adversity you know, in his life and in his career. And I think that's a, you know, that's a true testament of, of any leader at any level, whether that's a lot of years of experience or, or fewer. And I think that what Rocco has demonstrated, when we, when we vetted the candidate here and, and talked to people, it wasn't just talking about uh, with the GMs he worked for and, and just Kevin Cash, who he worked for. It was about talking with players. It was about talking to uh, minor league staff members. It was, was about talking about teammates. And I think the thing that continues to be the resounding answer is uh, how genuine and how much he leads through trust and, and all the things he just talked about about how he's going to build you know, his leadership style here is going to be because he invests in the people to his left and right and having dealt with some challenges over the course of his career and having responded to those and grown and developed from those I think that shines through as soon as you get the chance to spend some time with them and I know our players will feel the same way. Patrick. Rocco, considering where you came from, I suppose you're a fan of the opener that is ruining baseball as we know it. Did you write a column on that? that? <laughs> Several. Um, so I feel like open-mindedness and just curiosity are generally good traits, regardless of whatever industry that, that you're in. Um, but... You know, I could speak, I mean, really, I can get specific and, and say, you know, the opener or whatever it is that you want to call it um, did not come from, um, it, it was an idea that has kind of been around a while. We've seen it kind of sprinkled into games throughout the years. It was an idea that we had had in Tampa Bay for a while. We were kind of thrown into it because we were going to uh, go in that direction for probably one of our rotation spots and because of other issues and things that arose. We ended up doing it with a few, and it, it got it got coverage because of the success that that it, it appeared that you know came from it. I like to give the players the credit at the end of the day because really we tried to just put them in a good spot to succeed, and they did it. They went out there and performed and made the whole process look really good. But they went out there and did it. Um, they were open-minded. They were willing to try a few new things they weren't necessarily comfortable with, but it. It's just showing that maybe not that that's the answer and that every team should be going in this route, but that something different actually can work. It's just not easy always to implement, and, and anything new is strange and challenging and, and can be tough on people because change is, is tough. Um, but I think it's a good sign, and you can look at that and go, well, maybe that's not the answer, but maybe something else is, and we'll be willing to try that going forward. A few more Dan? Rocco, um, how well do you know Joe Maurer, and will you uh, reach out to him, or have you, during this process, talked to him? I felt very... I've, I've known Joe from the other side of the field for a while. Um, he's about as respected of an individual in this game as I know of. He is a, beyond a wonderful representative of the Twins. He is the Twins in a lot of ways. I think a lot of people relate to him in a lot of ways. Um, they, they love him in this area. I was able to get on the phone with him briefly um, earlier today. We have staff members in Tampa Bay that would want to coach Scott Kersey, our longtime bullpen catcher. He's like his favorite player. And he would actually go out to first base and coach first base just to go out there and shake Joe Maurer's hand. Like that's the kind of guy and and that's the way that people feel about him and if Joe Maurer um, you know I don't know what Joe's thinking about his you know own personal situation and it now is is probably not the best time to address any of that because that's his decision um, going forward but I think saying that Joe Maurer um, I think everyone would love Joe Maurer to be a part of the Twins organization going forward in some way I think that's a very safe 
Is that a safe assumption? I, I agree. I totally agree. Brandon. Uh, Rocco, when you think about your life in baseball, how would you characterize what you learned as a player and then what you've learned maybe differently in this part of the game when you've been coaching in front office and scouting and all that? How, how are those things different and how have you changed in that way? I don't, let, I don't really look at it as being different. I think I look at it as just what was I exposed to and that's generally the way that I look at a lot of things. Um, I'll get abstract on you for a second, but you know, I've, I've always believed that like traveling and going and seeing how other people live and like meeting other people um, and just observing what goes on in other places like teaches you a lot. It, it gives you an idea of like, you know, maybe, maybe what you're doing might not be, uh, you know, the end all at the end of the day. And I, I, I think it relates to really all aspects of life, but I think it really relates to baseball. You know, when I was playing, I was exposed to certain things. When I stopped playing, even towards the end of my playing career, we were already starting to talk about some new ideas. Doesn't mean every idea is right. Doesn't mean that it's going to help you have success in any way. But we, I started thinking about a lot of different things, and I was exposed to different things with our front office um, when I went to work with them, and that gave me a really good foundation of a completely different way of, of looking at certain things. Now, I actually do believe that when you take the a lot of traditional aspects of the game and, and teaching methods and things like that and just general good baseball knowledge and you combine it with some good information and good people to, to convey that information, that's when things can really work out well. And that's really, that simple equation is, is you know, what I would hope that, that we end up we end up getting going here. Rocco, you look good in that suit, but are you ready to uh, model some home whites? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I think you should. Thank you. I think we're going in front of the table for this, so. It fits so well, I couldn't get it. <laughs> With that, I'd like to conclude the press conference. Thank you to Rocco Baldelli, Derek Falby, Thad Levine.